Can you all? Yes. Hi everyone, very happy to see many of you. There are still some seats, so please make, uh, take a seat and feel like comfortable to join us here for this ride back and ahead of the Wikimedia Summit. And I'm Nicole Ebber from Wikimedia Deutschland and with me today is Eva Martin, my colleague also at Wikimedia Deutschland. And what we are going to do today is look back at the Wikimedia Summit that happened in April, so four months ago, in Berlin. And it was the last summit of its kind. It had two uh, focuses or topics. One was governance and one was future of affiliate gatherings. And I know that some of you have already been to our earlier session uh, right after lunch um, about the future of affiliate gatherings. And this one will focus more on the governance and movement charter. What we will be doing with you in this session, so you can sit back now, but then later it will be a little bit more interactive. Um, we will do a very short, we try to keep it short introduction from us as former summit organizers. And then we want to have a conversation with you building upon that. And we also brought some conversation starters to make it easier to get into the conversation. And the previous, the former summit, it was the affiliate conference. It was organized by Wikimedia Deutschland, always together with the Wikimedia Foundation and also co-funded by the Wikimedia Foundation. And this year also we had a close collaboration together with the MCDC, the Movement Charter Drafting Committee, because the focus was on governance. And one of the, one of the two purposes of this year's summit was to review the pre-final movement charter draft and identify, for example, deal breakers and what could be improved from the perspective of the summit participants, which were uh, affiliates and the Wikimedia Foundation and a couple of committees. At the end of the summit on, on day three, at, on Sunday, we, we or ba basically the participants identified 40, 42, it's also a nice number, 42 statements that then were presented in the plenary and people had the chance to up and down vote or approve those statements and they all got a majority support from the affiliates and then these statements and deal breakers were handed over to the MCDC, the Movement Charter Drafting Committee. And with that, I hand over to you, Eva. Can you give me yes, please. access to the mic? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so the summit was part of the community consultation that the MCDC was leading. They were getting a lot of feedback from many stakeholders in the movement on the final draft of the charter. And after the summit, they've integrated some of the feedback that was shared during the summit and also some of the feedback that they received in different rounds of consultation. They improved the charter, they clarified the language, and then in June, they shared this charter with the movement for ratification. And then the charter was approved or ratified by affiliates by 80, it's hard for me to see it from here, but more than 80% by individuals, by more than 70%. But the board of trustees did not ratify. They've also shared the reasoning behind it. And after that, the foundation released three concrete proposals on how to move forward from here, focusing on funds distribution, technology advice, and an affiliate and hub strategy. So what's happening now? We've heard already in this session that we had earlier today that there is some confusion. Sometimes there is a sense of frustration, and we would like to have a conversation to move past this frustration and try to work together on a way forward. So what we did today is we brought some scenarios. Those are very simplified scenarios. Those are the things that we've been hearing from different people and stakeholders in the movement. And we thought it can be a conversation starter, but we would love to hear from you. So what we've heard is we could maybe forget about the idea of a global council in the way it was laid out in the charter and instead move forward with the foundation proposals. We've heard people say, maybe we can work together to establish a global council along the lines of what has been discussed at the summit. 
We've heard people say maybe we need to stop to invest energy in governance conversation and do something else. And then there might be many ways of combining those approaches, other way of looking at it, which actually might be the most constructive way of moving forward together. So that's it on our side. We would love to hear from you now. We have another 35 minutes. Let's make the most out of this conversation. Who would like to start and share some ideas on how do you think we should be moving forward now? Yeah? I'm Lina from uh, Wikimedia Colombia. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, maybe one particular point to uh, start is to take into notice uh, the main goal that reunite this community. Like, what do we want to rem be remembered for or why we came along here and in all this work together. So I think that um, from, from Colombia we have been learning a lot of that and we have always in mind to put the community in the center of the action. So I think that that maybe is a starting point that the center of the whatever we want to do moving forward has to have the community in the center. Can you um, share a bit more about the Global Council along the lines of the summit statements and how that's different from the Global Council and the Movement Charter? basically similar. So I think in the way we've laid out the scenario, it is similar. Um, it is just in the way we are presenting the session today, we present it as the former summit organizers and therefore when people came to us and talked about this possibility, it was along the lines of what has been discussed at the summit. I think in this particular scenario, the precise definition of the Global Council might not be the most relevant thing. It might just be, I think it refers to the idea of the Global Council as it has been discussed in the past, which is basically the way it has been reflected in the conversation at the summit and also how it has been reflected in the Charter, if it makes sense. But it's actually great to have a conversation around it. Like, okay. Do you want to add something to this? No, I, just, I wasn't at the summit, so I'm curious about if there was different different ideas about the Global Council at the summit versus what's in the charter. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said the Wikimedia Foundation board explained their problems with the charter. I'm not sure I agree with that. Like I, I feel the explanations on why it wasn't ratified were very vague. But but the, the one thing that, that was somewhat less vague is that they didn't understand or they felt it wasn't explained why there is a need for a global council at all. And I, I think that's a somewhat fair criticism that there was never much effort to to define the problems that the global council is solving. Presumably the people who, who wrote the recommendation had a good understanding of the problem, but I don't think that understanding was really socialized and... and uh, explain to a wider audience. So I think rather than going back to implementing the Global Council via some sort of alternative process, the the way I would frame it is that we, we should chart out the problems that the Global Council was supposed to solve, see to what extent the Foundation is solving them, because the, the things that are proposed, the um, like product and technology council and uh, affiliate changes and whatnot. Like they they address some problems that the global council was supposed to address. Whether they address in it, it in a good or a bad way is debatable. But uh, they address them. But then there are other problems the global council was supposed to solve, which are not even addressed. So like mapping out the problems and 
having a discussion on how to solve them. Like I, I think at this point I would drop the concept of the Global Council and if it's like organically re rediscovered when starting from the problems, then it's good. If not, then probably those problems can be solved in other ways. Um, it, so it seems that the, I, I agree with Gerga that um, the, well, without putting words in your mouth, um, I, I think that the Global Council is meant to, what's that? Uh, okay. Um, I am Adam White. <laughs> I work for Wikimedia Germany and I have no business speaking about this right now because I'm, I haven't been a part of this process. So yeah, I, I do think it's a valid question. Um, but uh, my view from below as just an employee of one of the affiliates is that uh, what's lacking is not necessarily a global decision making body, but a glo global coordination body. I think it's hard enough to have um, small Wikimedia organizations in each country, perhaps, which are coordinating the, the work of editors. But what's completely lacking is a global discussion. And usually that's the first step before you have a global decision-making body, is that you have a group of people who coordinate, communicate regularly, and can just talk about things. Um, and sometimes that means you don't even need the decision-making body. Uh, and it, the other the other aspect of this, though, which I, I just wanted to comment because I don't see it reflected here, is that um, the other thing lacking is a ton of money. And uh, to get the money and resources so that uh, the smaller organizations can thrive, um, it doesn't seem that the Wikimedia Foundation wants to write anybody a big check right now. So you have to take the money, and to do that, you generally need to uh, withhold your labor. Um, you need to make a credible threat, right? Or you need to negotiate somehow. And uh, I, asking might not work. <laughs> That's all. Oh, God, you triggered a lot of topics here. I could go for two hours. I tried not to. Uh, money is another question. And uh, you were here, and we had that debate in the past. I'm ready to argue for all night that money is not a topic in the movement. And we are far, far from being to the situation where money is the constraints. We can decide it's the constraints, and that's what happened the last few years. And that's OK. That's a decision. But that's a decision. That's not a fact. If we need more money, we can get it. We are far from having tapped uh, the money we may have access to. I just I hear the money thing a lot. I just want to put that on the side. Um, on the uh, uh, global council thing, whether we need a global council or not, I, the name doesn't matter. Uh, but the origin story of the global council was from the strategy process, where the I mean the strategy process started as. Let's get every question and everything back on the table again, and let's talk about it openly. And that was the start of the strategy process to reopen all discussions. And in that process, there was, uh, um, I think, a common or shared understanding that one of the problems we may have as movement, and I say may because even though I believe it, that might be the case for everyone, uh, we may have to address what is happening, is that we are fundamentally a highly Western movement in the sense that decision-making and input and everything is very Western. And I'm going to give you something is, I've been talking a lot in the last two day, uh, in the last uh, day, uh, and, and I'm from France, and that, that's kind of here's a problem. But that's also our legacy. And so part of that was recognizing that legacy, and the legacy is not bad, because being a Western movement meant that we could tap into Western power and money to get to where we are today. But to face our future, we need to move away from that. And that's where the working group about uh, movement roles starts playing around with, whether it's global council or whatever we want, but with a body that would help us as a movement move away from being a, deci a Western decision-making movement to a more global one. That, that's the rationale behind the initial recommendation. What happens after that, the charter, the, global, the global council and so on, it's, it's another part of the story. But the, why there was the idea of a global council was that 
if we want to be able to be a global movement, if we want to, set, to put front and center the voice that are not heard right now, we need as a movement to relinquish some of the power as a Western movement and build something up. And that something up was Global Council. You can call, call it the, uh, the Council of Jedi if you want. That's going to be very fun to have. Yeah, but we don't care about the name. The, the goal was to have something that steps away from uh, being a Western movement. And, uh, oop, and, and the foundation, even if the board of the foundation is partly non-US, intrinsically, because the organization is incorporated in the US, depends on the US uh, laws and structures and so on, it is highly, highly Western. And, and that's just the way it is. And it saved us back then. It allowed us to become who we are today. But I, for one, believe that it is time that we find a way to move a bit away from there. And perhaps the move away from there is another thing than global concept. But I think that if we want to address and be relevant in the next 10 years, we need to, to change that. As for what we're missing, is, and i stop there, is we missed something that we had in 2016, which was a catharsis moment. I don't remember uh, looking at you because I know you were there, uh, but we had a meeting in Nizinolayo in a very, very big room. I think it was the uh, school something. It was 60 people in the room, and for two hours, we just talked about everything wrong that happened in the last few uh, months and years, and that's where we said we need to take to put everything back on the table, to talk about fundraising, to talk about what are affiliates and so on, so that we can talk about it. But we are that moment where we could disagree and then at the end agree that we want to move forward together. And I think that in your next steps, that's something we might be missing, is a moment where instead of seeing the uh, back of the neck of Natalia and uh, uh, it's just because you are in front of me, uh, but about remember, we face each other and we talk to each other and we say, okay, this is what was wrong, this is what was okay and where we go. And I think Miral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me up. Hi there, uh, Michal and uh, MCDC member here. So maybe one contextual thing about the Global Charter, uh, Global Charter and the Global Council. Um, so this is what uh, Christoph gave us uh, one interpretation of the Global Council. The thing is that there are many, 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 many interpretations of what the Global Council is, should be, what it should be performing. Mm -hmm. Um, and how it should be performing because of that. So for some people, it might be moving things from the Western world. I don't know. I didn't know this this particular spin, especially that personally, I don't see us moving from the Western world. I don't see us going anywhere else. I know. I don't think that Mr. Xi or Mr. Modi or regimes in particular countries outside of the Western world can be better or can give us something meaningful to the table. And I think that the Wikipedia as a concept is a very Western concept, to be honest. This is my personal take. You can like it or you can not like it. But encyclopedia, democratic encyclopedia, people working online in the internet with the free speech, this is the very Western concept. And we need to live with that. Um, for some of others, Global Council was moving basically from Wikimedia Foundation to the communities that are editing or the communities that are creating organizations, that they, that they are running organizations. For other people, it will be just giving more voice and just validating what the one center or core of establishment is saying by just a wider number of people with a different perspectives coming from different parts of the world, but sometimes uh, agreeing with some values that have been here all the time, but they will be bringing the new values and new perspectives, so making the things larger and larger in the effect. And these are these interpretations, and there are many, many, many more. So this is one of the challenges for us when working on the concept of Global Council, is to think what the precisely the Global Council is and which problems it's trying to solve. And then we have the things on top of that, is it an executive body, is it a uh, validating body, is it a consulting body? On, so now you can understand all the layers of complexity when you're trying to create the movement with the Global Council itself. Thank you. Anyone? Tim, maybe you. 
Oh, okay, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, Bobby Shabangu from South Africa here. Being a col colleagues, we are making very, <laughs> very concrete comments. But I'm, I'm thinking as you're talking, being a Western global movement does not necessarily mean that we should not be inclusive, right? It does not mean that. And uh, if we feel that we are moving forward, being a global Western movement, but we're not inclusive, it means then that something needs to be changed for us to be inclusive, right? I just wanted to, 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 to have clarity there. And I feel that, um, uh, yes, we do recognize that we are very, very much Western in our uh, makeup, but the inclusivity part is not, you know, taken into consideration. We're just moving. We are not, you know, being inclusive of all the diverse uh, communities that are forming part of this big community right now. So that's my comment. <laughs> Yeah, let's take this one and then we'll move to the next slide. <clears throat> Hi, Philip here. Um, so I like to be practical. Uh, I vote for B. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of effort has been put into all of this. Uh, we all know, and a lot of people here are witnesses to that. Um, and it's, it's a shame to, for all of that to go to waste. And I think there are valid concerns, um, but I don't think they're insurmountable. I think we can work together towards them, seeing as things are as they are, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, we should start thinking pragmatically because, you know, overthinking things in terms of strategy is just <laughs> more waste of time, I think. But But, you know, just... You know, and, and what uh, Christoph suggested earlier in the previous session is one way of, um, you know, taking the first step uh, pragmatically. So uh, I'm all for that. Let's let's start uh, thinking about how to, um, you know, how to uh, converge because this has to be a compromise, and um, the the. The, the charter has already been made as sort of a compromise because it will never be perfect. It will never satisfy everyone. It's just impossible. There are too many voices. Um, maybe that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah, it, we just need to you know carve it so that it it um, pisses off the fewest people possible. Yeah. Go on. Hello, I'm Jorge. I'm with the Wikimedia Foundation, but also a member of the Movement Charter Drafting Committee. My quick comment, I think it's with regards to point A. I think that in my interpretation of where we stand at the moment, I think that there is a world where we are not necessarily forgetting about the Global Council as a concept, and we continue to move forward with the proposals. And the reason why I say that is because I think that, or I think that the, those three proposals coming in the appendix of the board resolution actually reflect three specific functions proposed for the Global Council in the draft of the Charter. So those proposals are indeed reflected of what the Global Council is. And I see a world where maybe the follow-up of those proposals is seeing a potential Global Council in the future. But I think that that is a question for the Foundation and for the Board of Trustees that we, we plan to ask. <laughs> As a um, representative of the v Evil Wikimedia Foundation, I am the chair of Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. My name is Natalia Tymkiv. I am a Ukrainian Wikipedia. I'm administrator of Ukrainian Wikipedia, one of. And I'm also a member of Wikimedia Ukraine, which is an affiliate. I'm an affiliate member. I'm a community member. I'm also a volunteer for Wikimedia Foundation. Um, Nice to meet you. So uh, here I wanted just to say, just in case it's not clear, the Wikimedia Foundation is actually interested in having a movement charter. A movement charter is a part of the strategic recommendation that I also worked on. I was a member of a working group for roles and responsibilities. We were, like, I was a member of a group that proposed to have that. Now, 
there is a uh, there is a concept. Uh, sorry, I'm not a native English speaker, as you can understand. So, so. Um, as a concept, movement charter is going to help us all to figure out how to work together, how to move forward together, how to make decisions in a better way. That's a concept. But when you are voting as a board member on a document, as every affiliate who were voting or every person who were doing, you are voting on a concrete proposal. And the proposed movement charter as a document, as a governing uh, policy, possibly of a highest level, was not, um, did not merit, for example, my vote as a governing policy. Like, I mean, I'm looking at a document at a, as a document. Are there enough guardrails for a potential body that is going to make decisions? No, there are not. I am looking at it and I'm okay. If something goes wrong, I am coming not from a Western country. I am from Ukraine. I can tell you, Global Council is actually a very Western concept. Very not working in my country. Yes, I am not, you know, from Asia. I'm not from Africa. Unless I start speaking, you are not going to think that I'm not from a Western country. Global councils, general assemblies, and whatever else, they do not work in my part of the world. Because we are usually tokenized. We are tokenized. We don't speak English as much. We do not feel confident entering a big room saying that there are things that we are uncomfortable with. We have a UN, I'm sorry. This is not a body that is going to survive and this is not something that I would want. I am a community member. In a year, I'm finishing being a board member of Wikimedia Foundation. Do I want uh, 100 or 25 uh, people additionally bureaucratizing and making decisions when I, as a community member, can figure out how the decisions are made now? I have my own voice. I have my own vote. I don't want to give it to somebody else to make decisions and then for my Ukrainian community to figure out how are we going, like thousands of us are going to actually make sure that this one person or two people from my community would transfer the, uh, the, uh, my, my voice. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do it now because there are rules on Ukrainian Wikipedia when there are like 20 people voting and this is a decision that is, you know, Everybody missed the, uh, the announcement about that. And now we are writing articles for like the rest of my life um, with, I don't know, uh, crosses in, uh, um, in biograph uh, biographies. So, you know, I don't know how to do it. I, and I don't, uh, and here I'm speaking less of a like evil Wikimedia Foundation representative and more like a community member. I just don't believe in this document. I don't vote for it. That's it. But do I believe in the concept? Yes. I think that clear responsibilities of every group that we know that affiliates are doing things not for themselves, but actually to move forward more, to invest, to, you know, like figure out how things are going, uh, would go better. Okay. Um, I don't know who is in the queue. The main message was the Wikimedia Foundation wants the charter, uh, wants a charter, a movement charter. The Wikimedia Foundation didn't ratify this proposed charter. Natalia, so first, we can, if on uh, evil we can definition, it's not working with me, <laughs> and you know why. Uh, yeah. Just one question. I agree with everything you said. Why did you not say that two years, three years ago? Because everything you said is critical in the discussion, 
everything you said is uh, bringing a lot of very, very interesting discussion in terms of power dynamics, power distribution, and so on. And yet, to me, that's the first time, and perhaps I missed it, I see you having that very passionate but very on-the-point um, comment about what you would, look like, would like to have a better power distribution. Why, why, why does it come, I mean... I, I apologize, this is not my session. I'm, I don't know, overriding. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you mean why we haven't said. Uh, I mean, the, the foundation uh, helped, supported the MCDC. Uh, what, what, what exactly, like the words, exact words that we want a movement charter? Oh, yeah, um, but, you know, uh, um, it's very, sorry, 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 but every process is a process. There was a process, there was 2020, sorry, 2020, COVID hit. 2021, we started the process on MCDC drafting, right? Uh, people don't meet, there are no in-person meetings, still very unclear, events are not happening, everything. Wikimedia Foundation is looking for the CEO, then onboarding CEO. There is also not clar no clarity on the Wikimedia Foundation side about what is the Wikimedia Foundation doing. We do not have a strategic plan. Strategy, movement strategy was supposed to help us shape that. It was just passed in 2020. In 2022, we have a new CEO. In 2023, is because there needs to be time for a new person to get, to get onboarded on, into the movement and into the Wikimedia Foundation. In 2023 was the first time that Wikimedia Foundation figured out what are the priority, strategic priority, not annual plan, strategic priority for Wikimedia Foundation. That was 2023. <laughs> and then that was first draft, I don't know, trial, whether it can work. In 2024, we talked with, with the MCDC about the areas of responsibility that Wikimedia Foundation is able to pass on. What exactly were we supposed to say? When? How? Uh, like, I mean, to the movement? I would have said. I didn't know that somebody wanted to talk to me. <laughs> so you are the chair. Uh, sorry. I don't know how the process looked for you, but for me it was like, there is MCDC, everybody tasked MCDC with a task, but do people want, what want? Okay. Like I'm going to give the mic to Claudia. Last, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank but you. I've been in your shoes, you are the most powerful voice in the movement, and yet and th what you said is, is, I mean, I, again, I agree with everything you said, I wish you said that before. I, I say I wish. I think, because um, I think that we have the least inclusivity when it comes to more powerful. Wikimedia Foundation really behaves like a, from time to time as an elephant trying not to step onto anybody's toes. And uh, it's very difficult to speak because everybody is telling you, you are so powerful. When you say something, we are going to be silent. So. Okay, hi. Um, I'm Claudia from Wikimedia Austria and Wikimedia Europe. Um, Natalia, you know, I, I know you're coming from a good place. I really ap appreciate what you do and I value you as a person, but I need to agree with Christoph to a certain extent and go even f back farther a little bit because we've been together in that roles and responsibilities group. And I don't recall that you voiced back then like this very um, basic concern about the concept of a global council. And I think that really shifted. We shifted, and that's a bit like a, a classic textbook of goalpost moving. Like we, even just between the summit and here, we shifted to like it's too big of a size of a global council to we find the whole concept of the global council dodgy. And I, I would, would just wish like we, we started already like discussing that so openly in the in the working group and then in the next phases. So I'm also uh, irritated by that. So, and I know the world has changed and everything, but you know, um, we also do some of this stuff because mm. the world is constantly changing and we try to become a resilient organization. Mm. Um, and apart from that, I just want to make another point, like no matter whether we go to point A or B, I think the one was like, let's move on with the proposals, the others like, let's go back to the charter. I think we need to be a bit more precise of what does it mean to move forward or to work together on whatever. 
I really think we need to enter a negotiation phase because that what went wrong so far. We were not negotiating. We're having like very complex processes. And now we really need to make that a negotiation. We need to negotiate what the foundation wants and what the other stakeholders need to move that forward. And then I don't care whether it's proposals or the charter. I would prefer the charter um, and the global council for that matter. But I think we really need to go into like a suitable negotiation mode. And because you mentioned the tokenism, that's your problem with, uh, problem with the Global Council. That's my problem with some of the proposals of the Wikimedia Foundation. They sound like textbook tokenism to me. Um, the Technical Council, that like uh, FTC 0.2, that's exactly what we have. And that is not negotiated on eye level on the, on the same table with us. That's the Wikimedia Foundation having an idea, then having a bit of conversation to, um, you know, like say like we consulted you and then doing more or less like what you sought up in, in the boardroom or like, like some kind of meeting room um, from the staff. But uh, this is exactly the same problem I have with the number A. And I really think we need to talk about like what does negotiation mean and how do we do that? That's all I'm saying. And that okay. comes from a good place. I really don't want to offend you or anybody else, um, but I share a bit like that um, irritation. Um, I have to clarify. Douglas? I do not have a problem with the concept of a global council, like at all. I don't know how it needs to be implemented I have a problem with the Global Council as proposed in this text, not overall. Somebody told me uh, that the Global Council can be a page in Meta. Yeah, Oops. why not? You know, like, I don't know. There can be a, cre a more creative solution than a Western concept of a Global Council put in the document. So just wanted that to clarify because that's not, I'm not uh, against that. I think that we need something like that because we need coordination. Well, everything is happening, people are reinventing the wheel and everybody is like going through the same motions. Instead of actually having one place where you can come and learn and share, I don't know. You know, like having some place where we're actually together. Maybe this one place is here. Uh, so, no, no, but like we have three or four, three, four, three more days left, right? So we are all here. And how can we, like, this is the question, how to organize this? Who is going to continue to having these conversations? And what are the next steps? How do we get this, um, this done? This is like a question that we hope to get a little bit closer to an answer here. But we had a, a Douglas hand up, so the floor is Thank yours. you. I'm Douglas from Uganda. I represent the East African Regional Thematic Hub. So my um, suggestion to this would be between option one and option three. So it would be option one to give uh, time for the board to consider the available options. I saw there was a mention of, of uh, a grace period of over one year to, to determine how best they can look at the movement charter. And then option three, um, like we can't give up, but then perhaps it would be good to maybe take a break because I know the effort that was invested into this process by the MCDC mm -hmm. and the whole movement is too much. Perhaps it would be good to consider option three to maybe take a break, give, uh, give uh, the, the, the foundation, the board of trustees to evaluate the charter drafts and see what's coming up next. Then lastly, um, I don't know if in the movement charter drafts there were alternatives because I know this was an expected result. What would happen if the board doesn't ratify the, the charter? Uh, maybe you can also refer to that as we take a pause. Does the MCDC want to say something? Um. Just maybe does someone from the MCDC would like to answer this? Oh, hey. <laughs> no, I'm going to pass it. Okay. Because there was actually something. Yes, so um, these, are the, <clears throat> these are the excellent questions in general. And yes, we are quite concerned that uh, basically the, the MCDC has been tasked with uh, preparing the draft of the charter. And it has been prepared and it has been presented and you voted. And let's say two of the three stakeholders voted yes, one of the stakeholders voted no. And we are in a little bit of a limbo because if we agree that um, we need to have a charter, then we need to have a process to come up with a charter. Mm, it might be delayed, and I do agree that we are tired. 
we as the movement, certain, certainly as the MC, remaining MCDC members, we are tired. You can trust us on that. Um, but we should have some process and some owner, the owner of the charter. MCDC was designated as the owner of the charter and uh, maybe the strategy or the core of, core of the strategy itself. But now we need to have a new owner and a new process to come up with a different charter. Probably it will be a very different process to come up with something different. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We have a lot of work done, so it doesn't need to be that uh, long process. But we need to have a process and the owner. Mm -hmm. um, let's negotiate who will be this owner and who will be tasked with this privilege. Uh, of having of having that also i would suggest to negotiate the remits so the mcdc was very much operating on trying to cram all the strategic recommendations and the global uh, global uh, global council was the recommendation it was this uh, implementation initiative 25 and it was maybe not super specific but it was quite specific what the global council is and very often it was to supervise, it was to validate, it was to enforce the words like that were used. So I'm not sure if it can be really a page on meta. I don't see the pages on meta enforcing things and holding people accountable. So it's rather a body making difficult executive decisions. Mm. So, uh, so this is the pathway for us to really understand what's, how we can get there and get it accepted by all these stakeholders. So we are unfortunately out of time for this session, but we are not out of time for this Wikimania. And I would love to encourage you all, or us all, let's continue this conversation in the hallways, wherever, at the party, at the... There, there will be moments where we can have these conversations. And let's, let's use this energy of being in the room and having conversations. Yeah, no party. Sorry, I didn't no. uh, mention the party. <laughs> so let's use this time together because like I, if uh, someone can solve all of this it's us we need to solve it together yeah but he's right yeah he's right <laughs>